everybody, this is Sarah Sadia and today uh, we are going to explore more in detail about the ecosystem. Hope you enjoy learning with me. Hi everybody, this is Sarah Sadia and today I'm going to start a new series about ecosystem. Uh, so that you can, uh, you guys can define easily about the different ecosystems like forest and uh, uh, tundra, a uh, tundra marine. You can, uh, you, you can guys can easily identify them. So uh, today we are going to start it. What is ecosystem? An ecosystem is made up of all the living things and non living things. Hi everybody, this is Sola Sadi and today I'm going to start a new series about ecosystem so that you guys can define the ecosystems very properly and know that uh, which ecosystem is that, that like tundra, forest and marine ecosystem. So today uh, we are going to start it. Let's start it. What is ecosystem? An ecosystem is made up of all living and long living things in an area. This includes all other plants, animals, and other living things that made that make up the community of life in an area. An ecosystem also includes non living things, materials, for example, rocks, water, soil, and sand. A swamp, an ocean, and a forest are examples of ecosystem. Components of an ecosystem. An ecosystem consists of two main uh, components or parts. Biotic and abiotic. Abiotic means uh, non-living things and biotic means living components or living things. So a biotic components mean uh, a biotic components. The abiotic components of an ecosystem are all of the non-living thing element that affect living organisms. They include water, the air, the temperature, and the rocks and the minerals that make up the soil. Abiotic components of an ecosystem might include how much rain falls on it whether it is a fresh water or a salt water, how much sun it gets or how often it frees and thaws. The abiotic components of an ecosystem both live and interact with the abiotic components. Some important abiotic factors. Sun provides warmth and solar energy to a living organism. Sunlight is a main energy source for all life on Earth. A second point, Earth, autotrophs like plants, uh, algae, algae, and some other bacteria use light to make food. The number, third point, the number of hours of daylight triggers seasonal events such as plant, flowering, birds migration also. Uh, and then comes water. The water is the most important for life process for all living organisms around. Uh, for example, uh, plants and animals such as, such as plants and animals. Uh, and then say, uh, distributing food particles through their bodies, digesting food. Aquatic animals make their habit in water and also get oxygen from water. Then come air. Air provides oxygen to living organisms for respiration. Provide carbon dioxide to plants for photosynthesis. photosynthesis. And then came soil. Provide home to many animals. For example, arts and live in soil. Ants make their burrows in soil. Uh, soil. Uh, provide nutrients and water to plants. Plants stay erected in soil. Second, 
biotics and living components. Autospores are producer plant. Heterospores are consumer plants. Decomposer are saprotrophs. 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 Producers. Producers are the living organisms in the ecosystem that takes in energy from sunlight and use it to transform carbon dioxide and oxygen into sugars. Plant, algae, and photosynthetic bacteria are the example of producers. Producers from the basis of the food web and all are generally the largest group in the ecosystem by weight and biomass. Then come com consumers. Consumers are living organisms in the ecosystem that get their energy from con consuming other organisms. Uh, conceptually, consumers are further subdivided by what they are eat, herbivores eat per Per uh, eat producers, can work, eat other animal, and omnivore eat both. Decomposer. Decomposer are the living components of the ecosystem that break down waste material and dead organisms. For example, earthworm, dung beetles, and many species of fungi and bacteria. Then comes about a factor living, affect living organisms in an ecosystem. Fire destroy forests, but can sometimes help a forest community by allowing new organisms to thrive. Second, early unexpected frost can kill plants and entire food chain. Third, wind can affect the way an organism can grow. Biotic factor affecting the abiotic factor in an uh, ecosystem. First, lichens and rock help break them down into soil. Lichens are made up of algae and fungi. Second, dead organisms and animal waste contribute to soil nutrients with the help of decomposer. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe and like my and share my channel. Shine sorry. Sign it your leaders though. Thanks for watching. Please like, subscribe, and share my channel. Thank you. Hi everybody, this is Silva Sadia. As far as you know, we have started a new series about ecosystem. So today the topic on which I'm going to discuss. Uh, as a classification of living things. So let's start it. So uh, today our objective is uh, so that uh, uh, the person who is watching my video would be able to define classification, uh, differentiate between various type of living things according to their characteristics. Recognize and differentiate between various kingdoms of living organisms. Tackle textbook exercise. Develop various worksheets on their students. Classification of living things. What is classification? Classification means sorting out things into group of basic of similarities and differences among them. Five Kingdoms Classification Scientists classify living things into five main groups. Uh, and those groups are, and those kingdoms are named as uh, Monaria, Protista, Fungi, Plantae, and Animala. So first, Bacteria or monera. Uh, so our uh, first is uh, bacteria are unicellular uh, organism. They are found everywhere on earth. Some bacteria can make their food, but others get their food from living organisms or dead bodies. 
Most bacteria cause diseases in plants and animals. And our second, LG. LG is a unicellular or a multicellular organism. Uh, LG is found in lakes, seas, and ponds. LG have chloroplast and can make its own food by photosynthesis. Saprosia is an example of LG. And our uh, again fungi. Uh, uh, fungi are found as unicellular and multicellular. All fungi lack chlorophyll and does not prepare their own food. They absorb from their surrounding. Mushrooms are the example of fungi. Plants. Plants are photosynthetic. Uh, photosynthetic. Plants are photosynthetic multicellular organisms. They can prepare their own food. The a plant kingdom. They are multicellular. They are outside cell made up of cellulose. Many of the cell in plant leaves and stems contain chloroplasts with photosynthesis pigment. Uh, they make their food by photosynthesis. Plants are classified into flowering and non-flowering plants. A flowering plant, also called an angiosperm, flowers can help the plant in reproduction by making seed. At the center of every seed is an embryo or a baby plant. It just needs some soil, sun, air, and water to grow into a whole uh, big or new plant. And then come monocot plant. A monocot is a type of flowering plant that has a single uh, cot. Monocot plant. A monocot is a type of flowering plant uh, that has a single uh, uh, cotyledon. Cotyledon. Monocot are good uh, uh, as a uh, uh, food source for uh, both human and uh, animals uh, both humans and uh, animals can uh, are uh, have the because monocots are good as source food source for both human and animals there are approx 60000 there are ap ap approximately 60000 of species of monocots plum grasses onion and mon uh, are the um, examples of monocot then again, monocot plant uh, flower parts are in three multiple. Uh, they are three. They are divided in three multiple parts. It is usually much easier to recognize monocot due to their uh, primrose flowers and leaves with parallel veins. Parallel veins. The grass family is the largest group of monocots. Example include lilies and orchards, etc. Then came dicot plant. It means seed with two uh, cotyledon. Uh, all dicots are flowering plants. Pollen with three pores. Flower parts in multiple of four or five. In most dicots, the root develops from the lower end of the embryo. Example includes oaks, beans, mustard, maples, sunflower, and roses etc animal or animals animals are multicellular organism they cannot prepare their own food for uh, 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 because everyone everything can depend uh, everything depends on food uh, but they cannot prepare their food inside their body uh, they have to find uh, their own uh, their food. They, they they depend on the animals or uh, depend on the plants. They cannot make it by themselves. Classification and characteristic of animals: invertebrates, insects, joint leg with segmented bodies, have three parts of their body: head, thorax, and abdomen. Uh, then came uh, they have six legs. And uh, they have three pairs, six legs, and they have three pairs, different pairs. Classification uh, intervertebrates, worms. Saw bodies with no limbs, elongated nails like bodies, divided into many segments. 
thread and round worms are without segmented bodies. Then uh, came uh, vertebrate animals. They have backbones, they have blood that circulates their body. They have protective skin covering. Most legs, wings, or fins. They have a nervous system with brain. Then came fishes. Fishes are the vertebrate animals that live in the water. Fish have gills to breathe, have streamlined body or muscular tail to move in the water. Most fishes, uh, fishes have protective scales. Fishes are cold blooded. Then came birds. Sparrows, crows, parrots, uh, etc. belong to the group of vertebrates. The bird mainly uh, the birds group are uh, mainly uh, belong from the vertebrates group also. Uh, birds have break for uh, breed further uh, feather wing. Some birds like kiwi and ostrich, they do not fly. So they are called running birds. The, and the birds that cannot fly, uh, but they can just walk. They are called uh, like penguins, like penguins, kiwi, ostrich. They cannot fly, so they are called running birds. A bird lay eggs with shells. Then came the mammal. Uh, mammals breathe in air. Mammals have hair on their skin. They have backbone. All female mammals have glands to produce milk. They are born like not from an egg, like a fish, like a fish or and. Uh, uh, a bird, they are born alive. Uh, uh, then came, they cannot care for themselves when they are baby. Mother feed their young babies with their milk. Human beings, cow, goats, are mammal. Human beings are such a big example all around because the human beings are around the world, the biggest example of the mammals. They have uh, sweat glands, four chambered heart. They are warm-blooded. Uh, fishes are uh, cold-blooded and they are warm-blooded. Thanks for watching. Like and subscribe my channel. Sign in Shore Geeks. Allah Hafiz. Uh, we are going to meet soon. Allah Hafiz. Tata. Bye bye. Hi everybody. This is Ella Saadia. As for as you know, I have started a series about ecosystem. So today is the fourth episode of uh, Ecosystem, a series. And today the topic on which I'm going to discuss is a fresh water ecosystem. So let's start it. Types of freshwater by homes, ponds, lakes, uh, streams and rivers, wetlands are an example of uh, wet, uh, wa uh, freshwater biomes. Uh, ponds and lakes. Ponds and lakes are standing water and often called lenthic ecosystem. Lakes are larger than ponds. A lake Balki. In Central Asia is the biggest lake on the earth. It's fun fact that it, a lake Bal Bal Lake Bikal in Central Asia is the biggest uh, lake on the whole earth around the uh, uh, earth the uh, the biggest lake uh, around is the Lake Balkan Lake Manchar is the Largest natural, natural, natural freshwater. Largest, uh, natural. Hi, everybody. This is Salva Saadia. As per as you know, I have studied a new series about ecosystem. So today is the fourth episode of ecosystem. So uh, the today I'm topping on which I'm going to discuss about ecosystem is. Freshwater ecosystem. So let's start it. Types of freshwater ecobiomes. Ponds and lakes, river and uh, streams, wetland. These are all the examples of freshwater biome. 
fresh water biome. Okay. And then came ponds and lakes. Our first type is ponds and lakes. For example, pond and lake. So ponds and lakes are standing water and often called called a lengthy ecosystem because they are larger than ponds. Lake Balki. Bakal, Bakal, Lake, Lake Bakal in Central Asia is the biggest lake on the earth. Lake Manchar is the largest natural, larger, uh, first one is the biggest, uh, on earth it was not natural, but the second one, Lake Manchar, it was a natural freshwater, natural freshwater lake in Pakistan. It is a uh, Lake Balki in Asia and uh, Lake Manchar is in Pakistan and uh, is one of the Asia largest. Uh, the biggest lake, that was the biggest lake on the earth and that was the largest uh, lake in Pakistan and one of the Asia largest lake. Flora and fauna of lakes and ponds. Plants and algae are important to freshwater biomes. And um, because they provide the oxygen and water for animals in this biome uh, through photosynthesis uh, process, uh, water lilies, algae, and duckweed floats on the uh, surface like tulip, and sometimes these type of flowers float on the surface. Mm, a cat, um, cattails and redies grows along the shoreline, uh, shores. You sometimes you will see that there were many flower grooms along the shoreline of many freshwater ecosystem. Lake animals. Animals include pelican, pelican, crayfish, snails, worms, frogs, turtles, insects, and uh, lots of and many of fishes. Stream and river. The rivers and the streams are the flowing of fresh water, pure fresh water, uh, rivers come from the melting ice and the groundwater eventually flow into ocean. For example, the Amazon River. That was uh, 6,575 kilometer originates in the end in this mountain and ends in the Atlantic Ocean. How much big? Such a big river. Uh, the Indus River. 29,900 kilometer originates high in the Himalaya and em empties into the Arabian Sea. Over time, as river travel, they change course and grave apart to land. This caused Oxbow Lake and Carwan and uh, Canons. Estuary. The place where fresh and salt water meet is called estuary. And for, uh, and for example, Indus River uh, Delta Arabian, the Savannah example, and uh, Sea Mangrove. And then came river plant. River plant live along the edges of the river where the water is moving slowly and slower. Then in Fast streams of river may plant have special structures that keep them from being carried by water. Some have strong roots, then others have uh, insured them securely, while others have stems that bend easily with the movement of water. Plants include tape, uh, grass, uh, water, uh, water star, glass, willow trees, and trees bridge. River animal one. Mm, fast moving water animals have suction cup like structure on their body, holding on rocks. River animal number two. There are varieties of fish, birds, insects, amphibians, crustaceans, and live in river. Many species. And the uh, animals that live around the river include insects, snakes, a crocodile and others and beavers also. Ostrich plant has the ability to survive in fresh and salty environment. Mangroves and pickle weed are example of estuarine plant. East estuaries are rich in animal life and are often 
a protected area or young one of aquatic animal, for example, clams and shrimps. Wetland biome. Wetland biome. The wetland biome is a combination of land and the water. It is land that is saturated with water. Wet land includes swamps and marshes. They are often located near large bodies of water like lakes and rivers. The largest wetland in the world is in Pan Pantanal, Pantanal in South America. And wetland can help to prevent flooding. They also help to purify and filter water. They are the home to many species of animals and plants. Flora and fauna of wetland. Oh, sorry, flora and fauna of wetland biome. First, we have discussed of uh, flora and fauna of or of um, um, the, see I think so water, and then it came. Uh, we are going to discuss about flora and fauna of wetland biome. Uh, so when uh, wetland plants, uh, wetland plants may grow entirely under water or float on the top of the water, like milkweed, water lilies, duckweed. Some large trees, like uh, cypress tree, grow out of water. Some trees go uh, stay inside the water uh, instead of them. Some grow, uh, uh, grow out of water and they have uh, some floats on water and some grow so bigger than they are above the surface of water. Uh, like tulip and uh, uh, tulip and lilies float in the water. Um, and then came uh, some cypress tree that I have an example. They grow out of the uh, out of the surface of the water. So then came wetland animals. Um, and many animals live in there in wetland. Uh, like the person, like the, the things that likes uh, a muddy place or a saturated uh, water place, they live there. Wetland have a huge diversity in animal life. Amphibian, birds, and reptiles all thrive well in the wetland. The largest pred predator are alligator and crocodiles. Other animals include beavers, minks. Raccoons and deers. You have such a high diversity of animals in the wetland other than any. They have amphibians uh, and birds, they reptiles, and the uh, and the world's most dangerous animal, crocodile and alligator, and there are the, uh, and other many species of animal like deer, raccoons, and etc. And then came people are in freshwater biomes. One. Fresh uh, water ecosystem provides us water for drinking, energy, transportation, and recreation. When a dam is built, an artificial lake is created behind, uh, behind the dam. The dam can be viewed as good and bad. Dams may provide pollution-free energy and create lakes for people to enjoy, but they can so damage the environment. Salmon are a species that use rivers to spawn and are often hurt by dams. Dumping of garbage and sewage and making river ecosystem polluted. There are many reasons why the ecosystem whole are going polluted and there are no use of that ecosystem uh, full of uh, dirt and full of pollution. That's really hard, the environment. People and the freshwater biome, too. We can help the uh, freshwater biome by consuming less water and to ensure that there is enough water for a healthy biome. We should not pollute freshwater biome. Be careful what you put down the drain as the rain carries these pollutants down into the river. Streams, lakes, and ponds are example. Thank you for uh, watching my video and listening to me with such a patience. Thank you for your whole patience and your attention to my video. Allah Hafiz.
Um, we are going to meet soon. Allah Hafiz. Hi, everybody. This is Hawa Saadia. And as far as you know, I have started a new series about ecosystem. So today, the topic on which we are going to discuss is about grassland ecosystem. So let's start it. Grassland ecosystem. Features of grassland. The grassland seems like an endless ocean of grass. There are low uh, growing plants such as grasses and wildflower. Amount of rain is not enough to uh, trees to grow taller in like in forest. So in forest there are much rain that the uh, trees can grow taller, taller, taller. But uh, in this uh, position, the, uh, the the trees in grassland cannot uh, properly grow up, and um, they just slowly, slowly grow, and they don't have a much height. Weather condition. In grassland, extreme hot summer and cold winter and uh, uh, and cold winter in a, a there there is no specific uh, weather different weathers uh, along two uh, months or time little rainfall in late spring and early summer when there was a uh, so spring is going to be end uh, uh, there is little rain, and in the early summer, about when summer is going to begin, there is little rain. But other than that, no rain, so that uh, the plant can photosynthesize, uh, plant can photosynthesis, and uh, trees can grow more uh, naturally. Two types of grassland: temperate grasslands. They are so. Uh, they are also called prairies. They are also called prairies. They have hot summer and cold winter. Grasslands are found in Central Asia, North America, and in Africa also. Um, then came two types of grassland and the second type is tropical grassland. Tropical grassland are also called savanna. Savannas. Uh, they are found between desert biome and the rainforest biome. Uh, they are not uh, the type of grassland, but they are found in two different types of biomes, uh, like uh, uh, one rainbow and uh, one rain. Sorry, one rainforest and one desert biome. These in between these two, they are uh, they are they are found. Um, and they are also called savannas. They are most located near the equator. Plants in grassland. There are few trees in grassland because of low rainfall as far as we discussed first. Uh, types of grasses that grow here are buffalo grasses, blue gram grasses. The plants that grew here, um, that grew up here are the sunflower because they get much sun there and the butter, um, and butterfly weed. Then kings. What tall trees are not found here? Animals eat, uh, uh, animals here, anim there are a lot of animals who eat their tender shoes before they can develop into a grown up tree. Uh, and because animals have to uh, have a process and they have to eat, uh, they grow their shoot stems uh, so they can grow up. Uh, so the trees cannot fully grow. Uh, full, uh, fully, they can grow up. Grass can still grow after the animals. But uh, the trees cannot grow properly, but grass can give time by time. Uh, after the animals eat the grass, but the grass can grow, but the trees cannot grow. Animals in grassland. The, uh, the animals who live in the grassland, who are the, uh, who are the permanent members of them, is the Animals include wolves and eagles. Smaller animals that hide down in grasses are snakes and rabbits because uh, uh, the, uh, the trees are not long but the grasses are very long there so that the dangerous and these type of things can hide there easily. 
other animals, mice, hawks, rats, snakes, seagulls, zebras, and lions, because there's a whole food chain. Um, about our whole whole food chain can be found in animal grassland. No, sorry, I mean I think grassland. Uh, in grassland, we can find our whole whole food chain. The problems with grassland. What are the what are problems being created, or what are the problems that are happening with grassland? Grassland is converted into farmland because the grassland have a very good soil, rich soil because of that the trees grow, uh, grasses grow. So they have been converting time by time, time by time they have been converting into you know, farmland for because there is as far as population is growing, there is much food needed and all the grassland has been cutting and they have been converting into farmland. Grassland supply corns, bees, and other grains. It provides grazing animals um, because they are, it's the benefit that uh, because they have their grassland grass view by time to time. Uh, so um, the animals are here to so they can they can find their food. They are the uh, they are, they have home there. Thanks for watching and your whole attention to my video and you have listened so much patiently to my video. Allah Hafiz, we are going to meet soon, inshallah. Hi everybody. Hope you all are fine. Um, as far as you know, uh, I have started. Hi everybody, this is Awa Saadiyah. Hope you all are doing well. Um, today is the fifth episode of ecosystem as far as you know i have started a series on ecosystem so today is the fifth uh, episode of tundra ecosystem uh, on which we are going to discuss about uh, so let's start it what is tundra re region a vast flat treeless arctic re region of Europe, Asia, and North America, in which the subsoil is permanently frozen. Tundra is over 20% covering the Earth's surface. So uh, this is a fun fact. It, tundra is over about 20% 20, uh, 20 of the area of the surface. It's just covered by a uh, 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 tundra region. And uh, other eighty percent are other uh, by by other biomes. Regions of tundra, Arctic tundra. It lies on the North Europe, Russia, Canada, and Greenland. Alpine tundra. It's further south than Arctic tundra. Arctic circle that uh, surrounds the North Pole. Plant. It's a treeless religion where some plants can be seen here. Uh, white flowers, shrub, mosses, lichens. Small uh, plants are the group uh, and the plants are small group visit together, uh, sorry, group together to resist wind. Growing season for plant is maximum 60 days. They are adapted to use less amount of energy. These are all about uh, three types, and plants are the treeless area. There are no tree. There are little grass, shrubs, mosses, wild flower, which are dangerous uh, to insects and human beings. Also, um, these uh, the the grow grow time and the grow time for them is above sixty days or maximum sixty days. Animals. Most of the time, the turn draw are migratory. Uh, the animals or the person who live there, they migrate because there is so, so much school there that a person can hardly survive there. The animals who adopt adapted to that religion cannot survive without that religion. And the one who cannot, um, um, who cannot, the pills are hardly a person can survive in Tantra because there's so much school. Most of the animals of tundra are migrating. Some animals sleep during extreme cold. This also helps them, uh, animals, to survive. Animals of tundra. Reindeer, Arctic folks, 
fox, snowy owls, or Arctic hares, poles, their beers, is all are the, the types and the animal of the animal lives in Tantra. Mountain goats sleep, uh, mountain goats sleep, gray wolves, sleep, snow grease, and insects. These are also the types of animals. Food chain in Arctic Tundra. Had it, um, had a polar bear, 0.1%. Secondary consumer, Arctic fox, minus 1%. One percent only. Primary consumer lemmings ten percent. Producer legends hundred percent. People, very few people live in Tundra, as far as I told you before. Hardly any person can survive there, or some person are adapted to the cold religion so they can survive there. Very few people live in Tundra. Eskimo do hunting and fishing as food. Eskimo are the people who live in that area. Uh, they have a gang of wolves uh, that uh, from there they fish or hunt. Weather conditions. Arctic tundra. Rainfall is scarce. Snow covers tundra for more than six months of the year. Has the ferro most layer of 1500 feet. Winter as low as minus 45 degrees Celsius. It's so much uh, that minus one is so much cool, but about why minus 45 Celsius, the winter grows as much as low that the temperature. Rainfall, because as far as very, very cold area, rainfall is ready. Sometimes rainfall happens or sometimes not. And um, above all the year in Sandra, it's cover up uh, snow, no sunlight, just covering with snow, cold every time, not a single one month or one week of Sundays. Weather condition, summer up to 4 degrees Celsius, no better, most short summer, 6 to 10 weeks, as far as I said, uh, that uh, there are little, very little um, uh, time in which summer came. So, 6 to 10 weeks or 1 to 2 weeks became summer games. Sun shines up to 24 hours a day. Uh, and 24 hours sun shines and cool summer. It is not all the time the summer will be hot summer. The cool summer, the, the summer will be also cool. Uh, less extreme winter than Arctic tundra. But this religion, the region I was talking about, uh, Arctic Tundra is most called this place, but the, uh, the place uh, uh, le the place where it was talking about is less extreme that have not much pressure of winter. Landform. Tundra is flat, hill or mountains, bear or rocky ground. Bear or rocky ground, coastal areas, because in the area of uh, uh, because in Tundra area, many mountains, many hills are there, and they are flat hills uh, because of the mountains. Mountains are a little bit flatty, are rock, full of rocks, so, and there are coastal areas around there, are rivers and other things. The polar bears of Tundra and the most dangerous animal of all the species, and one of the most dangerous animal in the Tundra, a spoiler beer and um, it was uh, just a tremendous and a terrible uh, the most dangerous animal lives in tundra is polar beer it loves to eat fresh seals whirlers and bear belgras eat berries eggs in summer they hunt by the power of scent and um, not by the power of sight it's similar the power of scent means that but for because of nose, they can smell a thing and then can go to them not by ears or not by sight power, not by hearing power. They're using the power of scent. They hunt by the uh, they can smell their food at 32 kilometer away. Wow, uh, because this is fun fact that uh, they can smell their food from so long far away. The 32 kilometer away food can they can smell 
from the far past uh, place. Stomach of an adult bird can hold 65 kg of food. An adult bear can bear or can uh, can can bear to 65 kg of food. This much. Thanks for watching. Please don't forget to subscribe and like my channel. Allah Hafiz. Meet you soon. Be happy always. Hi everybody. This is Ella Sadia. As per as you know, uh, I have started a new series about ecosystem. So today is the topic on which I'm going to discuss about ecosystem as marine or salt water ecosystem. So let's start it. Marine types of marine biomes. Marine biomes can be divided up into three types. Oceans. There are five major uh, oceans that cover the world, including the Atlantic, Pacific, Indian, Arctic. Hi everybody, this is Helva Sadia. As per as you know, I have started a new series about ecosystem to telling you guys what are the ecosystem. So uh, today the topic on which I'm going to discuss about is Hi everybody, this is Helva Sadia. As per as you know, I have started a new series about uh, ecosystem so that you guys can identify the ecosystems. So today the topic of the video on which I'm going to discuss is marine or salt water ecosystem. So let's start it. Types of marine biomes. Marine biomes can be divided up into three parts or types. Uh, oceans. These are um, the five major oceans that cover the whole world, uh, cover the world including the Atlantic, Pacific, Indian, Arctic, and Southern Oceans. Then come coral reliefs. Uh, coral reliefs are small in size but compared to the oceans. But around 25% of the marine species live in the coral reliefs, making them an important biome. So this is a very important biome uh, as far as it has uh, such a good benefit to the whole biome around the marine biome especially because this covers about 25 percent of species live here then came water marine biome has a bigger influence on our terrestrial uh, climate it provides rain through evaporation wind to uh, help circulate and affect coastal uh, temperature the constant emotion of the Oceans result in currents and waves. Um, there, um, there sometimes there uh, is a big influence on the whole climate uh, and on the weather. By marine biome has such just a very much a bigger uh, influence about uh, by the climate. If the climate is changed, the marine biome has a different influence. Instead of this, when this day is summer. The marine biome has a specific and some else a big influence, but uh, even winter, it's uh, according to climate, uh, the influence changes, and every influence has its own um, uh, difficulties and benefits. There are two types of seas: freshwater and saltwater. Freshwater ponds found in lake ponds uh, and uh, these type of places and uh, streams and rivers are the examples uh, where the fresh uh, where the salt water can be founded salt water is found in seas exactly um, plants of the marine biome plants in the oceans are extremely important to all living all the lives on the earth, uh, on the planet Earth, uh, but, uh, this is a very important part of our all, uh, all the human beings and all the uh, living persons and the uh, living non-living person in the life. Uh, the algae in the ocean absorbs a 
uh, carbon dioxide, carbon dioxide, and provides much of the Earth's toxicity. Such a helpful benefit. Uh, keep uh, help provides shelter and food to the ocean animals, and is even used by humans in things like ice cream and toothpaste. Uh, even uh, not only the marine biomes can get a benefit of these all um, marine uh, uh, different type of coral reliefs and other types of uh, different uh, things in that, but also humans using this ice cream, toothpaste, soap, etc. Uh, they uh, they very not only used by um, animals or uh, the persons who live in the marine, but also us. Uh, phytoplankton uh, is an other important plant found in the ocean. This is a food for many ocean creatures, from the largest whale to the smallest fish. Other ocean plants are seaweed, sea, and um, grass. Animals of the marine biome, as per as we had discussed, there are many. So we have to know what are we have. We had discussed that they eat food. So we have to know also which uh, there are how many uh, different types, different species of uh, marine uh, marine biome has different species and different types of animals. So let's discuss it. The ocean is a home of many animal species on the earth. It has the animals almost cover part in the marine biome, especially. Fish, shark, swordfish, tuna, clown, eels, and seahorse. Fish have gills to breathe, as far as we know. These all are this, such a different species from each other. They are fishes, but uh, they are different from each other, and um, they all live in marine biome. Marine mammals, the mammals who live in uh, only uh, not uh, amphibians, live in mammals also. There are some mammals who live in marine biome, like blue whales, seals, were well dresses, dolphins, and otters. Molluscus, octopus, clams, oyster, and snails. These are type of there are the three types. We had uh, the four types. I have found the four. There are three types we have discussed about in which marine biome: fish, marine animals, and molluscus. Then came next. Coral relief. Coral relief are one type of uh, habitat. Hmm? Uh, when tiny animals called flufficide die, their skeleton harden so other polyps can live on the top of them. Then uh, when those polyps die and more move in, a thousand of years, this become a complex structure and called Coral relief, such a brief history. Uh, there, this uh, is uh, about the habitat and the habitat of the animals. When one died, it its skin become so hardened like a stone, and then when one another one another die, it become uh, such a like um, a complex structure that is called coral relief. Such a brief history. Animal. Uh, after thousands of years, this becomes a complex structure called a coral reef that provides food and shelter for many kinds of ocean animals. Animals such as seahorse, clownfish, sea turtles, um, and turtles all live, almost all, all sea turtles live on corals, not anything else. And corals themselves are animals. This is important. We have discussed first that uh, there is a special type of animal that dies. So it's mean uh, a coral relief itself is a, 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 a animal. They grab food from water using tiny tentacles like arms. Peoples and oceans. So we are today in as as far as we are reading in the topic is mean that. Mm, how people are affecting the oceans and oceans are affecting the people almost i think so people are affecting the most demand for resources from the ocean is a damaging ecosystem and depleting these resources overfishing and fishing in critical reproductive areas are making the problem worse pollution is also harming the marine 
uh, ecosystem pollutants such as fertilizer and household products badly disrupt the ecosystem and can cause harm to sea life. Dumping of waste material from industries, ships and sea waste plants into ocean has polluted the marine ecosystem to great extent. The plastic pollution has a direct effect on body. And many people life destroys uh, everything destroys uh, um, it impacts on the whole marine not only marine on the whole ecosystem just not uh, it 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 destroys all the food chains all the systems it just uh, disturbs a uh, 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 full life of uh, not people but everyone else and other than again sea water level rising the sea water uh, the, the rising is low and but then as far as we have our society is growing uh, there is a much higher level of rising of water alarming increase sea water level threatening the marine ecosystem many organizations and people are currently trying to protect and clean our oceans there are many simple things that we can do to help and protect the oceans by seafood that is uh, sustainably harvested to make sure that more sea creatures do not get hurt by fishing recycling or reuse of plastic products thank you so much and your for your whole attention and listening to me allah hafiz meet you soon Hi everybody, this is Sala Sadia. As per as you know, we have started a new series about ecosystem. So this is the third episode of the ecosystem, forest ecosystem. Uh, so let's start it. Kinds of forest system. Each kind of forest has its own plant. Hi everybody, this is Salva Saadi and today um, we are, this is a new episode and the third episode of the ecosystem. As far as you know, we have started a new series about the ecosystem. So this is the third episode and we are going to discuss about forest ecosystems. Uh, so let's start it. Kinds of forest ecosystems. Each kind of forest has its own plant and animal and their homes to many different type of plants and animals. The different uh, forests include the uh, deciduous forest, the coniferous forest and the tropical forest. Deciduous forest. Warmer than other forests, make rain in the summer and snow in the winter. Example oaks, beets, and maple trees lose their leaves in autumn and grow back in spring season. More trees include uh, more tree due to go more trees Due to our soil, more rain due to uh, good uh, our soil, the rainfall is around 30 to 100 inches each year. A lot of sunlight that reaches the plant and trees. Temperature of forest is normal. Animal and the people of the serious forest, bears and deers, etc., have adapted to live. They uh, are in hi hibernate when it's too cold, good for people due to not cold or not too warm. Problems of the serious forest. People have cut down many. Trees and homes and buildings. 
Many uh, animals had left the forest in the search of new homes and left the previous ones to save their own lives. Coniferous forest. In North America, Asia, and Europe, uh, as examples, of the, uh, they have the coniferous uh, forest. Uh, they have pines, fir trees, and they have um, uh, uh, they have cones to reproduce. They don't have a seed. They have a cones to re uh, they have spiky cones to reproduce. They uh, have never completely lose their leaves. Then in spring or in autumn, they don't lose their leaves. They have little bit on their uh, on their stems. Uh, gets around one forty inches of each year. Uh, the soil is not rich. Animal of the coniferous forest: owls, deers, uh, 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 owls, deers, tigers, hippos. These are examples of coniferous that the animals of the coniferous forest. Woodpecker and many other insects and birds. They have fur and uh, may burrow in summer to hibernate in winter. Problems in coniferous forest. Animals lose homes because of deforestation and mining has caused animals to leave their homes and to live in the other places uh, that cause their life in danger. Tropical forest. They grow near the equator. They have warm climate. Uh, they have uh, lots of rain. rain. The trees grow very tall. Therefore, sunlight has a hard time reaching ground. They have a bushy trees and they have a, 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 a green grass and that much. That a whole forest is full of greenery and uh, uh, the sunlight cannot properly reach to the ground and uh, the sunlight uh, the sunlight uh, raises cannot reach in the, that forest. It's very difficult to survive in that forest. Uh, they have a loss of rain there uh, because of very uh, many trees and uh, many grass. They have a lots of rain there every year, every time. Uh, the that type of forest have a warm climate because they have a rain this season and uh, um, because of much rain they have a warm climate in which there is not much cold and not much hot. A warm climate. Um, they uh, and the main important point they grow near to the equator uh, that is the most important thing to know where they can grow so we can know that they are they grow near equator animals of the tropical forest homes to many insects and men uh, animals uh, many animals are dangerous and they camouflage Example snakes like viper, frog, lizards are some animals in, from which we scared and they are very dangerous because the frogs, the snakes, and the viper, cobra, and etc. They have there are many. Uh, so the uh, the tropical forests are the best for them and uh, to save their life and to live there all, all the season. Um, there, uh, many insects and animals have a home there in the tropical forest. Thanks for watching. Allah Hafiz.